السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته ما شاء الله تبارك الله الحمد لله الحمد لله العظيم الخبير الأجل يغفر الذنب ويعف الزلل تنزح مولانا عن نقص وعلل جبار قوي لا يكل ولا يمل بسط الأرض بقدرته وأرسى الجبل خلق السماوات والأرض بالحق ولن يتركنا همل لا يغيب عنه مثقال ذرة في واد أو سهل سبحانه من إله عظيم خلق كل شيء بحكمته وعدل لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن عظيمنا وقدوتنا ومولانا قرة عيني محمد ابن عبد الله عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله أرسله كافة للناس بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا فبلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة فكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فصلوات ربي وسلامه عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وبعد My beloved brethren, most respected elders, mothers and sisters uh, Before I start, this is my first time being in your city And uh, it is a delight to be amidst you Allah Rabbul Izza make this few moments that I am with you and you are with me moments that will go in our mizan of hasanat moments of which we will be proud in the court of the Dhul Arsh al-Majid and moments because of which Allah Rabbul Izza will forgive the sins and elevate the ranks Ya Rabb وَمَا ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ بِعَزِيزِ The topic tonight for myself is trained by the Prophet. Trained by the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The way I will tackle the topic, I will unpack parts of a single hadith. From it, we will take the fawaid, lessons, understandings of the product of the training that the Prophet ﷺ provided. So, the Sahabi Awf ibn Malik says, أَتَيْتُ النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فِي غَزْوَةِ تَبُوكِ I came to the Prophet ﷺ and the campaign of Tabuk. The campaign of Tabuk was one of the last campaigns the Prophet ﷺ would take part in. You would know that it was in a time of immense heat, very difficult, very long journey, and um, this is known as the Ghazwa of Tabuk. So Awf ibn Malik says, I came to the Prophet ﷺ during this campaign, and he was inside his tent, um, and I asked to enter, and he said, come in. And once I came in, the Prophet said the following, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, U'udud sittam bayna yaday sa'a. Look for, count six things before the hour. Watch for these six things before judgment day, as in these are, from the signs of the Day of Judgment. أُعْدُدْ سِتَّمْ بَيْنَ يَدَيِ السَّاعَةِ The first one, مَوْتِي My death. So the Prophet وسلم, establishes that his death is a sign of the signs of the Day of Judgment. And we know from historical record 
that the Rasul passed away alayhi afdalu salatu wa atammu taslim in the 11th year after Hijrah and in the annals of human history, there is not a darker moment, not a harder moment, not a harsher moment than the moment of the passing away of the Prophet wasallam for me and you and for this ummah. So now the event happens. So the Prophet wasallam passed away. And now I want you to watch the training of the Prophet ﷺ. So the Ashab were bewildered. Ashab, this is the Prophet of Allah. Some of you, Allah give your parents long lives, have lost parents. The ache of that, you feel. Some of you have lost near and dear. And all losses are nothing in comparison to the loss of the Prophet ﷺ. Anas ibn Malik says, when he ﷺ entered the city, came into the city, the whole city was, in, you know, brightened with his presence. And when he went, darkness engulfed the city. Metaphorical, but difficult. So now at this juncture, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu comes when the Ashab are bewildered. Umar radiallahu anhu is there shouting, whoever says that the Prophet has died, I will cut off his head. He hasn't died, he's gone to meet his Lord like Musa met and he will come back hard to accept. Ali radiallahu anhu um, was silent people would take him this way he would go you they take him that way he would go in this juncture I want you to see the training of the students of the Rasul so Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu comes to the pulpit and he says oh people man kana ya'budu muhammadan fa inna muhammadan qad mat whoever used to worship muhammad no muhammad has died وَمَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيٌّ لَا يَمُوتٌ And whoever worshipped Allah, then Allah is eternal and Allah Rabbul Izzah doesn't die. And then he recites this verse. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٍ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ أَفَإِنْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلًا قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَضُرُّ اللَّهَ شَيْئًا Muhammad is not but a messenger. Before him, messengers came. If he were to pass away and is no more, would you then leave the mission and leave the task and leave the deen and turn on your heels and walk? So at this juncture, the first lesson we learned from the tarbiyah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The difficulties, hurdles, ups and downs, losses in life will come. But me and you do not have the option of forfeiting the message of the Rasul. We do not have the option of turning our backs on the mission of the Rasul. So from this, dear ones, I draw the following lessons. Make the purpose of your lives the purpose of the Rasul. Alayhi afdalu salatu wa atammu taslim. See yourselves, so towards the latter days of prophethood, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent the Sahaba out to different empires and to different kings to carry the message of the Rasul. So they went hard travel on animals, you know, horses and camels, the heat and thirst and no hotels to carry the message of the Rasul. For that, their wives at home sacrificed, their children at home sacrificed. Everyone understood that we live lives of purpose. So dear ones, live lives of purpose. See yourselves as messengers of the messenger of Allah. First one, 
Second point. The Prophet وسلم, gives the second point. The first one was Mawti. Thumma Fathu Bayt al Maqdis. So watch for six things. First, my death. Then the conquest of Bayt al Maqdis, the conquest of Palestine. So in the time of Umar ibn al Khattab, عن, Islam reached the doors of Palestine and the archbishop of the city said that I will hand this, the keys of the cathedral and the keys of the city only to the Khalifa, only to Umar ibn al-Khattab. Now there in, in Palestine, Medina is a long way away. And this is the leader of the believers, Amir al muminin Umar ibn al-Khattab. So now, he has to make the long journey to go and receive the keys of surrender. And you would have anticipated, like I swear this to you, if it was me, you would have seen pomp and ceremony. You know, entourage and people on your right and people on your left and pomp and because you're yeah, a Khalifa's coming. But Umar ibn al-Khattab left Medina on a single mount with one servant. And they used to take turns, who gets on that? So parts of the time the servant is riding and Umar walks in front of it like a servant. Parts of the time Umar is on it and the servant is walking in front to guide the camel. And when they reach the precipice of the city, Subhanallah bi yadihi al-maqadir, it was the turn of the servant to be on the camel and Umar to walk. So they know people of wisdom, like listen ya Amir al muminin ill befitting that the Khalifa of the believers enters the city carrying the rope of a camel. So you come, ride on the mount, I will walk. So Umar ibn al-Khattab says, we are a people that Allah honored through Islam. We are a people that Allah honored through Islam. And if we seek honor in anything other than Islam, Allah will dishonor us. And I'm not one call this sufficient honor in Islam for both of us. Now notice that today, 2022, is it 22 or 23? I'm jet lagged, guys. I've, I've come. So, 2022, in Birmingham, in this auditorium, the story of Omar from centuries ago is being mentioned. You know why? Because Allah honored him through deen. Had he walked with pomp and ceremony and chosen, sought honor other than deen in this, he would have gone into the annals of history as all others went into annals of history. Do you see that when Allah honors you through deen, nothing can dishonor you? And Allah will carry that honor through time and space. So dear ones, the second lesson to learn is that seek your honor and your recompense whilst progressing the mission of the Prophet only from the court of the Dhul Arsh al Majid and Fa'al al Lima Yurid. So, in that, your own egos, your own you know, whims and fancies, sacrifice without letting hindrance. Seek the greater reward in front of your Lord. 
And I also wish to point to something here. So when Umar radiallahu anhu entered the city, took the keys, the archbishop asked him, come pray in the cathedral. So in a sign that will shine through history as a sign of tolerance and acceptance and coexistence, he says, if I pray in your, in your cathedral, my people might see this as an indication that we took ownership of this and take it from you at some stage. So I will pray there outside by the footsteps so that I am giving respect to the place, worshiping my Lord, but at the same time you keep ownership of your cathedral. Contrast the same with some centuries later when the Crusaders came, their general wrote to the Pope, His Holiness, to say that our horses are up to their knees and the blood of Muslims and Jews and women's bellies have been torn open and their unborn children taken out and massacred. I say it so that you see that even in times when we had full authority and full control, Islam shown in nobility and in character and um, gave an example to the world of this is how you conquer and this is uh, how you walk in victoriously um, and, and the same couldn't be matched by anyone else. So third lesson to learn, dear ones, from the training of the Prophet wasallam, is learn grace. Be gracious, whether in defeat or whether in victory. Be gracious in defeat or in victory. Because in your path in da'wah, you will suffer setbacks. Bear it and you will have wins. Rejoice with grace. Allah Rabbul Izzah grant me a new victory. Third lesson, the third point the Prophet ﷺ mentioned as in third sign after Fathu Bayt al Maqdis. Thumma al Mawatan Ya'khudu fikum kaqa'as al Ghanam. Then there will come massive deaths, as in a sickness or a plague that will take from you as plagues take from livestock. You know, for those that have livestock, or at least in the past, they used to get some kind of bug, some kind of infection used to come, and then um, they used to become unwell, and the signs of the unwellness was that um, fluid used to run from their nostrils. So the Arabs used to call this Amful Ma'za, the nose of the, of the goat or of the, of the sheep. Uh, similar word in English, influenza. Amful Ma'za, influenza. So the Prophet said, it will take from you as the bug takes from livestock, like lots of deaths. So in the 18th year after Hijrah, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anh went out again towards Bilad al-Sham. In near this area of Tabuk, the generals of the Muslim army came out to receive him and greet him. And when they met, news came that the pandemic has started in Amwas or Amawas, a locality in Bilad al-Sham. So now Umar is, what to do? Do I continue my journey or do I go back? Or, so he asked for consultation. 
So the elders of the Muhajirun, the Shuyukh, came and he asked, should I go ahead or turn back? Some said go, some said stay back, undecided. He asked for the elders of the Ansar. The Ansar came, they gave their opinions. Some said go, some said return back. It wasn't clear, decided. Then he called the elders of the Quraysh, as in the elders of the Meccan society. And they unanimously said, turn back. So Umar ibn al-Khattab opted to turn back. I want to stop here, dear ones. The deen taught us consultation. Shura wa amruhum shura baynahum. Consult with whoever is affected by the decision so that they are aware and buy into your decision. For those of you who do not have the patience to consult, you will alienate whoever else is with you on that journey. So, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, although he is Umar, and although he is the Khalifa of the believers, he consults extensively, consult dear ones extensively. Listen to this point of view, listen to this point of view, listen to this expert in all fields of life. And then make an informed decision that is the murad of Allah and the murad of the Rasul. And practice this, teach this at your family level. Like I know you think you are the, you know, I am the man of the house and the father of the house and Rabbul Bayt and I will decide and entahal mawdu and everyone will walk the walk. Uh, possible, but the better version is let's have a family meeting. I am planning to go to Birmingham for this lecture. What do you think, guys? Should we or shouldn't we? Now, what happens is your little ones instead of just being recipients of favors, are now engaged in the process. They get engaged in decision-making, which makes them mature, which creates responsibility. And one of the hikmah of consultation is it trains the next lot of people for responsibility. Part of succession planning is to go through this uh, consultation. In this, notice a few things. So the Muhajirun and the Ansar were half and half. But the leaders of the Quraysh, they were unanimous, turned back. The difference is, Meccans were used to statecraft. They were used to running some type of a government, some type of a city. They knew what the demands of a government is, the demands of a state is, and we can't afford to lose or sacrifice or compromise a leader for a sickness and compromise the affairs of the whole state. So no, you go back. So this leads us to consult with experts. Sometimes you want to start a business, you khalas, bismillah, habibi, let's buy it. No, slow down, stanna shwaya, go and do some consultation, find an expert, let them do some analysis for you, figure out the population, figure out their income, figure out the catchment, figure out the feasibility, figure out your, you know, your cash value. Once you've, this, do, once you've got all that, then fatawakkal ala Allah. So first point. So Umar ibn al-Khattab decided, I'll head back. Now some of the Ashab, ala ra'sihim, Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah, said, Ya, ya Umar, or Ya Khalifa, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, are you running away from the Qadr of Allah? Like, are you afraid of death and running? So Umar says, لَوْ قَالَهَا غَيْرُكَ Only if someone other than you had said this. And look at the wisdom of the language. 
in it is madh, like your station is so high. At the same time, in the same sentence, there's reprimand, like this doesn't befit you. Praise that you are who you are, but also reprimand. So he says, we are leaving one qadr of Allah for another one. And as they're in this discussion, or a little bit later, Abdul Rahman ibn Auf comes and he says, I have a hadith on this. I have knowledge about this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if there is a pandemic in a city, if you're outside of it, don't enter it. If you're inside, don't leave it. So done. And they say Umar was never as happy hearing a hadith as he was as happy hearing this one because it confirmed his stance. But it teaches us our next lesson, dear one. If in, you know, contestation, dispute, turn the matter to Allah and his prophet. And whatever they have decided, accept that as this is the decision of Allah and his prophet. I have three minutes left and about 30 points to go through, so um, it will be abrupt. So point, dear ones, is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam trained a generation after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the training was successful enough that within a few short decades, the empire of faith extended from Granada in Spain on one side to New Delhi in India on the other side. And I tell you this with two minutes and 25 seconds left, if you let the same training affect your lives as they let the same training affect their lives, you will reach the same pinnacles in the dunya and in the akhirah as they reached in the dunya and in the akhirah. For your time and patience, I thank you. My dear one above the heavens, guide and guard you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.